How's it going, my good friends of YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be breaking down three ETFs that I believe, in my opinion, you can buy and hold forever and do pretty dang well in doing so, whether you're buying them every week, every month, every half a year, every year for that matter. I believe you'll be able to do very well by simply buying and continuously buying these and holding them forever. So we're going to break these down. I'm going to go over my thoughts on them, of course, and what I'm doing. So sit back, relax, snag your 50 bucks from M1 Finance, which is limited time, by the way. That is linked down below. And you guys could check out my Patreon if you want all my buys, sells, call outs, a morning update video, and a bunch of exclusive content and access to me throughout the day. That's on Patreon, link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video with ETF number one, which is VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. And what an ETF is, guys, <clears throat> it's pretty much just a, a fund, right, that tracks uh, a specific index. So in this case, VOO, and by the way, there's a difference between ETFs and mutual funds. ETFs can be traded throughout the day like their individual stocks. So you can literally go buy VOO at market open in the middle of the day, at the end of the day, after hours, pre-market, where with mutual funds, it's a bit different. Uh, but with VOO, ETFs in general, they're extremely liquid. You can buy in and out of them and, and you can sell them whenever you want, hence why they're extremely liquid, some more than others. And they track broad-based indexes, whether it's the S&P, the NASDAQ 100. There's so many other ones that track specific industries, whether it's the airline industry, cruise line, the MJ industry. There's so many out there. But in this video, we're going to focus on three more popular ones that I believe are very good. So number one, again, <clears throat> is VOO, which tracks the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. And if we go down a bit to get some more information on this ETF, you guys can see this has done pretty dang well. The past 10 years, we've seen a 16.18% return. Five years, about 17.5%. Three years, about 18%. In the past year, it's up 35%. And year to day, it's up about 18%. And if you look at the S&P 500, it's pretty much right in line with what the S&P has returned because, again, it tracks the S&P 500. And when you're looking at ETFs, guys, it's so important to look at the expense ratio. And this is why I love ETFs and I very much so prefer them over mutual funds because mutual funds, a lot of the time you're paying 1% to them, 2% to them to manage your money or, or the fund or whatever. And if you do the math long-term, you might not think 1% is a lot, but when you compound that 1%, 2% over 30, 40 years, you're literally giving that mutual fund so much money. It's ridiculous. So when I'm looking at funds to invest with, and by the way, investing in ETFs, this is kind of a set it and forget it strategy. I look at these as kind of a staple, the staple to my long-term portfolios. And I build around them. I buy individual stocks around them. That's kind of how I do it. Um, and I just like having a core ETF or multiple ETFs um, as the base that pretty much match the market returns, maybe do a little bit better depending on what ETF you're in. Uh, but the VOO will match the S&P's return or, or the overall market. And that has an expense ratio of zero. 0.03%, which literally means, guys, <clears throat> for every $1,000 you're investing, right, you're paying $3, if I got that math right, which I'm pretty sure that is uh, the correct math. So you're not really giving up pretty much anything. I mean, for every 1000 bucks, it's $3. Um, or maybe I got that wrong. I don't know. But it's a very minuscule amount of money that you're paying for the VOO ETF. And the P ratio is 34. I mean, we all know the S&P P, uh, P ratio is pretty high. They pay about a 1.3% distribution yield. Another 
afterwards, they pay about a 1.3% dividend. And you guys can see, and this is ETF.com, by the way. You can go on here and look at all the different metrics. I mean, it says index tracked is the S&P 500. And you can see the top sectors. Technology is 34%, followed by consumer cyclic, uh, <laughs> cyclicals. Cyclicals. And financials, healthcare, then we have the top 10 holdings, which are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet. Surprise. I mean, no, it's not really a surprise at all. Then we have Berkshire, Tesla's uh, sixth, which is nuts, or seventh. Um, we have NVIDIA, JP Morgan, and out of the top 10, that uh, those top 10 make about 27% of the ETF. So for me, this is by far my biggest ETF holding, ticker symbol VOO. Another one that I own personally is DGRO, and I've been buying this one a lot in the past year. This is an iShares core dividend growth ETF, and this is an, an ETF that focuses on, um, you know, a lot of technology companies and a lot of companies in general that are growing their dividend at a fast clip. You know, you have companies that pay a huge dividend today, like the tobacco companies, a lot of healthcare companies, but some of these aren't really growing their dividend much year over year, right? But this ETF, again, focuses on companies that maybe don't pay such a big dividend today, but in 10 years, their dividend is going to be a lot bigger, the companies within the ETF, because they're growing their dividend very quickly. So if we scroll down a bit, you guys can see DGRO tracks an index of U.S. stocks that are selected by dividends, dividend growth, and payout ratio, then weighted by dividend dollars. And DGRO offers a straightforward execution of a dividend growth strategy. And if we go down a bit more, you guys can see um, the, the yearly return is 33.8% in the past year, almost 17% year to date, three years, 15%, five years, about 16%. And I believe this ETF, yeah, the inception date, which means when it got brought to market was in uh, 2014. I knew that already. That was in June, middle of June, 2014. So it's about a seven-year-old ETF. And the expense ratio is 0.08%. So it does have a little bit more of an expense ratio compared to VOO. But at the end of the day, guys, if you're paying under 0.1% of an expense ratio, I mean, that's pretty much nothing. That is nothing to worry about. That is very good. And if we scroll down a bit more, you guys can see number of holdings in this is 387. So it has 387 stocks and the distribution yield is about 2%. So not too bad at all. I mean, 2% dividend yield. It's not amazing, but it's not like 0.5%, which is what Apple's dividend yield is or something like that. It's still a respectable um, dividend yield of about 2%. And if we go down a bit here to see the holdings, all of these stocks are in the U.S. So, you know, DGRO, all the stocks are U.S.-based companies. We have about 20% in tech, 17 in financials, 17 in healthcare, 12% industrials, and you guys can see the list goes on. And when it comes to the top holdings, they look a bit different from the VOO ETF top holdings. We have some of the same names, obviously, uh, but we have Microsoft, Apple, Pfizer, J&J, &J, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, JP Morgan, Home Depot, Merck, Cisco, and these 10 companies right here, they make up about 27% of the overall ETF, which again is about 380 holdings. So that's ETF number two, which I've been buying a lot of the past year, year and a half, two years. Same with VOO, like I said. And ETF number three is one that I don't own, full disclosure. I do not own this one, but I plan on owning it in the next coming years when I do want to focus a little bit more on um, dividend investing, right? And the third one is NOBL. This is the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. This ETF tracks an equal weighted index of S&P 500 constituents that have increased their dividend payments annually for at least 25 years. If you guys don't know what a dividend aristocrat is, 
It's pretty much a uh, company that, like I just read to you guys, has increased the dividend for 25 plus years. So these are companies that have a very reliable dividend. And when you're looking at companies out there, they have missions to their shareholders, right? Others, um, certain companies focus on growth, you know, reinvesting that capital. Certain companies focus on giving money back to the shareholders. And these or this ETF, the companies within it focus on giving money to shareholders. So I would look at this if I was a dividend investor, a hardcore dividend investor, and I wanted some um, exposure there. NOBL, only selects companies from the S&P 500, like I said, that increase their dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. And we can see the sector weights are capped at about 30%. And I believe this one does have a higher, excuse me, guys, a higher um, expense ratio. If we go down a bit, you'll see in a second, or maybe did I pass it already? Um, yeah, I did pass it. Let me show you guys this. I feel like my uh, face is in the way. Look here on the right. You can see the expense ratio is 0.35%. Year-to-date return is 16.5%. And there is a competitor here, SPYD, which is also worth looking at. It has a little bit more holdings, less expense ratio, higher year-to-date return. Um, so that could be one worth looking at. But for this video, again, we're looking at NOBL. So they do have a pretty high, not extremely high expense ratio, um, but it's not that low either. It's kind of in the middle ballpark there of, of 0.35%. And if we go down a little bit more, let's see what they did in terms of return. Five years, they're up 11%. 13 years, 13.35. Past year, up 32%. Year to date, about 16%. All of these stocks are in Canada and or not Canada in the US you guys can see here top countries of NOBL and the top sectors include consumer non cyclical uh, cycl I keep saying cyclical in this video cyclical industrials financials basic materials consumer cyclicals um, healthcare and you can see technology is only 4% so if you want exposure to industrials financials and consumer non cyclicals this is the ETF for you and you guys can see the different holdings new core corporation target Albemarle, uh, West Pharmaceuticals. We have Exp Ex Expeditor. I can't even say that word, guys. Jeez. And T. Rowe Price, Roper Technologies, Pentair, Essex Property. So a lot of companies that many people wouldn't know. Um, and their dividends. Let's see what their dividend is. It's got to be at least 2%, maybe 3 Um, Let's see here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's less than that. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Distribution yield of about 1.9%. So... Not that great, if you would think. Uh, you'd think it'd be more, right? But hey, it's not that bad either. And to be honest, I would personally... I, I like NOBL, don't get me wrong. I plan on owning it. But I would rather own DGRO. Higher dividend yield. I like the companies more within the ETF. Bigger exposure to tech. And it owns um, DGRO. Or rather, it has a higher dividend yield and a lower expense ratio. So... Yeah, overall, VOO, DGRO, NOBL, these are three ETFs. And guys, I mean, look, <clears throat> you can do more research. I'm not telling you what to do. Don't buy or sell or do anything based on this video. You can do more research and look at the competitors to these um, ETFs, and maybe you'll find one that's better, like SPYD, which is no uh, NOBL's competitor. Um, this could be a very much better uh, option. You know, let's pull that up very quickly. SPYD. You know, this could be one that um, it's a higher yield with a lower expense ratio. So you guys really have to uh, jump into this. Look, the distribution yield is almost 5% on uh, SPYD. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to open your guys' mind up and uh, see what these ETFs offer. Maybe you guys find some interest in these and do more research on your own. And again, full disclosure, I own VOO and DGRO. I've been buying them like crazy and I will not stop buying them. These are ETFs that I will continue averaging into. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, check out my Patreon down below if you want to support the channel a bit further. And of course, you get a bunch of exclusive perks on there like my buys, sells, call outs real time. 
and you guys get a morning update video every single trading day. And you could check out the M1 Finance link for $50 free dollars from M1 Finance, which if you guys use my link, deposit 100 bucks, we each get that 50 free dollars and we can invest that money into maybe one of these ETFs. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching again. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.